soul is also recorded in the physical genetic makeup. There is a resonance between the gene of the body and the information of the soul. There is a resonance. The affinity of the, of the soul is, is, is caught up in between. It, it, that, that place, that resonating factor you have there, where the nerves end, the soul begins. That's why when they use the electron microscope on the on nerves, they don't know where it goes. It just keeps going and diffracting and, and just gets smaller and smaller. That's where the soul begins, right where the nervous system ends. So any experience you have, anything that you perceive as ugly, as evil, or as hurting, or as pain, is registered on your soul as a blemish, as a signature. Clearing the signature or the graffiti of experience always begins with the soul. In this process, the soul radiates the signature of past experiences in such a way that a certain burden becomes active in the genes. The genes construct the signature as a disease. Oh. <laughs> Taking a break. We have to, because I'm getting ready to take off. But check what I just said to you. This is deep. Let me say it again. The soul radiates the signature of past experiences in such a way that a certain burden becomes active in the gene. So the signature, the, the graffiti, uses the genes as an outlet for the burden that it was carrying. All right. Now. The soul radiates the signature of past experience in such a way that the burden becomes active in the gene. The genes now hmm, construct the signature as a disease. As a matter of fact, it creates the temple in the womb according to the previous signature. That's why you say, well, how the hell is Jerry Lewis going to stop this disease? He ain't! Because the signature is still there. The contract is still signed. So the genes construct the signature as a disease or a desire to fulfill a particular aim that was left unfinished in a previous life. Therefore, any foreign gene that is implanted and becomes superimposed or a part of the body resonance acts as a jamming device. Yep. Hello, you're getting it. You put those artificial genes into that body, it acts as a jamming device between the body and the soul. That's right. It is not identical with the true genetic structure that organically created the physical makeup in accordance with the past experience that molded it. It is different and does not correspond to the burden of the soul. The soul cannot bypass the jamming frequency or the program that it has constructed. And the xenogene, because of the signature frequency in the xenogene, the xenogene frequency creates a dis... Now this brother knows what I'm talking about. Puts you and the soul out of phase. Distortion. The soul resonates based upon the experiences. If you put a foreign gene, like a pig, who don't know anything but mud, all beep beep signals going off in your brain. You don't know what the fuck is going on in your head. You get migraines. You want to jump out a window. You don't know what the hell is going on. But your soul is out of phase with the genetics necessary for it to unburden itself. So you bug the fuck out. I'm just last page for, for part one. The result is a jumble of distorted light frequencies. For a clearer example. My own path of error is recorded on the soul and in the genes. Starting from the soul, I can organically clear up my past mistakes through my present learning experience in this flesh temple. However, the path of error, which is foreign to me, that is, the foreign programming that was implanted into the DNA, is not a part of my soul's experience. Therefore, the soul cannot activate the steps to clear itself of the burden of errors. The consequence is that the soul cannot work over and clean up or, or, or clean up or clean out the foreign programming until it has burdened itself anew through the Xeno programming. In other words, it has to take the new programming into itself and accept something it didn't do. <laughs> 